Hi everyone, welcome to the CAYPT channel. I'm Jim. Today I want to share with you a small electronics project. In our experience doing IYPT problems, we often need to use various electronic sensors to take measurements and process the analog signals coming from them. For example, if we wish to measure light intensity from a photodiode, we will have to use an operational amplifier or op-amp in the trans-impedance amplifier configuration. For a circuit like this to function, we need to supply the op-amp with a negative DC voltage with respect to ground potential. This is hard to achieve with regular lab bench power supplies, you will need to connect two of them in series. It will be amazing if we can have a compact module that we can plug into the wall and have stable positive and negative 15 volt DC voltage for our op-amp circuits. This is called a dual rail power supply. And today I'll show you how to build one in this video. Before we get started, an important warning. I'll be working with the mains voltage. It can be very dangerous if not handled properly. If you're not experienced with circuits, please do not do this yourself. This is especially true if you live outside of North America where the mains voltage is much higher. Let's take a look at the schematic. It is quite a classic design. I'll link the source of the version I use in the description. First, we need to drop the mains voltage level to a level that is close to our desired output voltage. Here in Canada, we have 120 volt RMS AC from the wall. We will step this down to 30 volt RMS using this transformer. This transformer is special in that on the secondary or output side, its windings are center tapped. This means that we can make an electrical connection to the center of the secondary. If we connect this lead to ground, we can split the output into two rails. One will become the positive 15 volt and one will become the negative 15 volt. Next, we pass the AC voltage into a full bridge rectifier. These dials will rectify the AC voltage into a bumpy DC voltage. We then stabilize this bumpy DC voltage with two 4,700 microfarad electrolytic capacitors in parallel with two 100 nanofarad ceramic capacitors. These ceramic capacitors do not add much in terms of capacitance, but they do offer lower equivalent series resistance and inductance. This will improve the transient response of the system. To regulate the DC voltage, we use two voltage regulators, the LM317 and LM337 for the positive and negative rails respectively. We have a fixed resistor and an adjustable potentiometer to act as a voltage divider. This will adjust the output voltage of the voltage regulators. We add some more electrolytic capacitors on the output side to filter the output voltage even further. This completes the schematic. Let's get all the components and solder everything together on a perf board. I started with the circuit board, we will install the transformer later. I first solder on some screw terminals, this will make the power supply circuit more modular. This is the only rectifier IC I can find on hand. It is quite big and doesn't fit into the perf board holes. I use screw terminals to connect it to the circuit. Next, I solder the big electrolytic and small ceramic capacitors in place. I was careful about the polarity of the electrolytic capacitors. If their polarity is reversed, they will blow up. I continue to solder on the voltage regulator and output capacitors. I double checked the data sheet for the pinout of the regulators. Finally, I connected the trimmer potentiometers. These will help me fine tune the output voltage. Now that the circuit board is complete, I will work on the chassis. I got this die cast aluminum box. It has external mounting holes. I can integrate this into a bigger project if I want to. I want to use this IEC320 panel mount connector. I drilled a hole using a half inch drill bit, then I clamped the box into the vise and used our benchtop milling machine to open up the hole for the connector. I could have used a file or a Dremel tool, but this way is much faster. Next, I soldered the primary side of the transformer to the connector and added heat shrink tubing for insulation. I then wired a ground lead to the chassis here I have a crimped ring connector and screwed it into the chassis for a secure connection. On the output side, I decided to fuse both rails and limit the output current to 500 milliamps. 
for output, I used BNC connectors. This will allow us to have well-shielded power rails to the op amps. This completes the construction of the device. Let's give it a test. When we measure the output with a multimeter, we indeed get stable plus minus 15 volts. I do not have a fast switching load for us to test today, but I can test the stability of the power supply without a load. Our power supply has grounded BNC, so we can safely connect it to an oscilloscope. We can see that the output voltage is incredibly stable. No significant oscillations are visible. If we zoom in, the noise is on the order of a few millivolts. This is about the noise floor of the oscilloscope. It seems like our power supply is performing well without any load. This concludes our video for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you're more interested in theory, you can check out our ongoing computational tutorial series made by Arsha. I'll see you in the next video.